Hey guys, today I am so excited to share with you my 2023 sunscreen roundup and this year's focus is all things Korean sunscreens. This was actually my first time trying Korean sunscreens and I was blown away. We have some real winners in this year's roundup. I feel like we've got something for any skin type today. All of these sunscreens were gifted to me by YesStyle, so big thank you to YesStyle. But as always, of course, all of my opinions are going to be totally honest and unfiltered. And, you know, some of these sunscreens I didn't enjoy, and I'm going to share those as well. If you are interested in checking any of these out, YesStyle did hook us up with an affiliate code. So if you use my code Sarah Rose, you will get 10% off your order. So I've got 12 different sunscreens to share today, some mineral, some chemical, and then one hybrid sunscreen as well. For every one of them, I filmed a demo and for each demo I measured out exactly a quarter teaspoon which is the recommended amount that you're supposed to use on the face and neck to get the full protection so that's what I use just for consistency sake and then in the demos I'm also showing what they look like after they've been on my skin for 10 minutes after they've had a chance to sink in and also what they look like under foundation and setting powder and I made sure to use the same foundation and setting powder with each one I used the ColourPop pretty fresh foundation which has a pretty like middle of the road finish. It's not overly matte. It's not dewy. It's kind of just a satin finish. So I felt like it was a good one for this. And then I set everything with the e.l.f. Halo Glow setting powder. And for reference, my skin type is, I would say right now it's pretty normal, not really dry or oily, but it does lean somewhat dry. And because I do try to only buy from brands that don't test on animals, all of these sunscreens I found on Cruelty Free Kitty's list of Cruelty Free K-Beauty brands. So if that is a concern to you, all of these are cruelty free to the best of my knowledge. So let's go ahead and get into the sunscreens now, starting with my least favorite moving up to my favorite. So my bottom three sunscreens, I just, I wouldn't really recommend these to anyone. I don't think they're horrible. Luckily, actually none of the sunscreens are unwearable, but these bottom three, I just don't think are like, I just think you can do better. So <laughs> these I would skip personally, but my least favorite sunscreen, this is actually the one I'm wearing today. And this one is not terrible. It definitely is still usable for me. I probably will go ahead and use this up because I do just have the mini of it anyway. But this is the Wamisa Organic Flowers Sun Cream. This has SPF 50 plus, as do all of these actually. And the PA rating is plus, 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 plus. So four plus signs, that's actually the highest PA rating a sunscreen can have. And that measures the effectiveness of the UVA protection. This one retails for $31, the full size, and I did calculate the cost per ounce of all of these just so we could compare the value. This one doesn't have a great value compared to some of the other ones. It comes out to $14.76 per ounce. So this is a zinc oxide based mineral sunscreen, and what I don't like about this one is just it is so thick. When you squeeze it out, it it's like a paste almost. Like you can see there, it's very thick and creamy and this you can also see it kind of will cling to one spot on your skin like you have to work really hard to get it to blend in once it blends in the white cast isn't too bad but it's definitely a white cast even on my fair skin i do notice a kind of pale ghostly cast on my skin and it feels very sticky and tacky and that tacky feeling doesn't really go away it doesn't really set down it sort of just feels like it sits on top of my skin i can feel it on my skin and it just just feels kind of heavy um the finish on this is definitely very dewy a little bit shiny i would say i think this would probably only work for people with very dry skin but even if you do have very dry skin i think you can find so many better options so i wouldn't really recommend this to anyone all right so in second to last place honestly i feel like this one is pretty much tied with the wamisa this is the isentree hyaluronic acid natural sun cream so this is the mineral one that isentree makes i know they do also make a chemical one the watery sun gel which i have not tried but i would like to try it because i've heard really good things about it this is another zinc oxide based sunscreen and this also gave me a pretty noticeable white cast not as bad as some sunscreens. Like, I have tried some sunscreens that gave an even worse white cast than these two, but definitely noticeable. Just kind of gives me, like, a ghostly pale look to my face, and I can always tell when something is giving me a white cast because it makes my teeth look yellow in contrast with the white sunscreen. So, really wasn't a fan of this one. This one also feels very heavy on my skin. It's definitely pretty dewy and shiny as well. Not quite as shiny as the Wamisa, but a pretty shiny finish. And weirdly enough though, under makeup, it can kind of look a little bit dry. There was even a time where it 
made my makeup pill on top of it. This one kind of missed the mark for me too. I don't think it's the worst mineral sunscreen I've ever tried, but I also wouldn't recommend it. The value on this one is also not great. It's actually even a little bit more per ounce than the Wamisa. This one is $15.68 per ounce. Ranked at number 10, this is my third least favorite, and this one I like just a little bit better than the previous two, but I still wouldn't really recommend it to anyone. This is the Revectin Skin Essentials Aqua Soothing UV Protector with SPF 50 plus in the same PA rating of four plus signs. This one has both zinc oxide and titanium dioxide as the sunscreen filters. This one is not nearly as shiny as the previous two. I would I would describe the finish of this as natural matte. It's not like a complete flat matte, but it's definitely on the more matte end of the spectrum. It doesn't feel drying, like it actually does feel a little bit hydrating to my skin, but it also does feel really heavy and it gives me a substantial white cast, um, kind of in line with the Isentree and the Wamisa. Also makes my teeth look yellow, so it's kind of a no-go for me. One thing about this, I actually don't mind it under makeup. I think it makes a pretty nice blurred base underneath makeup, but the problem with it is by the end of the day, my makeup does start to look a little bit separated and heavy, a little bit dry, so I just think for the price, it's kind of pricey at $29. The value is $17 per ounce, so even higher than the previous two. Um, I don't think it's the all-time worst sunscreen, but I, I just wouldn't recommend it. I don't think... Like, you, can, you can do better. You can do better than this one. <laughs> so with those bottom three out of the way, now we're kind of getting into the territory of sunscreens that I... I like. I think they're okay. I think some people might really love these, but they're just not my favorites. Next one is another mineral sunscreen. This is the I'm From Rice sunscreen. Same SPF and PA rating as the previous three. This one is a zinc oxide based sunscreen again, and this one also has a sort of natural matte finish to it. Similar finish to that Rovectin Aqua one, but the white cast is a little less severe. I do notice a slight white cast, but it's a little bit more wearable than those previous ones. So I would say this is a solid option if you have oily skin. I think I probably will enjoy this a little bit more as the weather warms up. My skin gets a little bit more oily in the summertime, but uh, I do think there are better mattifying sunscreens that we'll get to in a moment. This one is also not a great value. It's about the same value as the previous ones we talked about. This one is about $16 per ounce. Now we're getting into some of the sunscreens that I actually do really like and I would recommend. This one is coming in at number eight and it is the Benton Skin Fit Mineral Sunscreen. This one retails for $18 on YesStyle, uh, at full price at least, but the cost per ounce is $10.77, so significantly lower than some of these other ones. This is another zinc oxide based sunscreen. This one definitely has a matte finish, but it doesn't give you that powdery dry feel that some matte sunscreens give. It still actually feels pretty hydrating, but I like that it doesn't make my face look super shiny. It does feel like it sets down on my skin. And the white cast on this, I would say, is a lot less noticeable than a lot of other mineral sunscreens. Definitely is still going to give you a little bit of a white cast, especially around the hairline. Um, and of course, I can only speak for myself. I know if you have a deeper skin tone than me, then you're definitely going to notice more of a white cast with any mineral sunscreen. Um, but luckily, I have some great chemical sunscreens to share in this video that aren't going to give you a white cast. One thing I'll note about this is it has a pretty strong rosemary essential oil scent to it, so if you're not into that, then definitely skip this one. And I like the way this one wears under makeup. It also makes any makeup you put on top of it look pretty matte, so um, I actually really like to wear matte sunscreens like this under a more dewy glowy foundation. I feel like they really balance each other out nicely, um, but I think this one wears really well under makeup. And I actually think this would work pretty well for all skin types. I didn't mind it on my more dry skin. If you have dry skin but you still like a matte finish, I think this is a good option, but I think you would especially like this if you have normal to oily skin. So really solid option there. I think that's a good good choice. Number seven, this one I'm not going to spend too long on because unfortunately it seems like this has been discontinued. Um, I was only able to find it still available on like one random website, but if you can find it, I do really like this one. This is the Aromatica Soothing Aloe Mineral Sunscreen, another zinc oxide based sunscreen. This one is very hydrating, very dewy. This one actually reminds me a lot of the Kopari Antioxidant Face Shield if you're familiar, if you happen to be familiar with that one. It looks very similar to that one on the skin, but is more affordable. This one does have like a lavender scent to it. 
This one I was really into in the winter when my skin was a lot more dry. It is very hydrating and emollient. It does give probably the dewiest finish of any of these sunscreens, honestly. So if you don't have dry skin or if you don't like a really dewy finish, you probably wouldn't like this one. But I, I think it's a great option for dry skin. I probably won't wear it a ton like in the summer, but good one for the winter. And the thing I like about this is that even though it is a mineral sunscreen, the white cast is very, very minimal on me, almost non-existent. I get like the tiniest bit like around the nose, but it's really not too noticeable. So I feel like I can wear this even without makeup on top and I'm not going to feel self-conscious about the white cast. So I wish this one was still around. Hopefully they bring it back. But uh, yeah, if you are able to find this one, I do think it's a good pick for dry skin. Next for number six. So we are officially in the top half of the sunscreens. This is the COSRX Aloe Soothing Sun Cream. This one has the best value of any of the sunscreens that we're talking about today. It retails for $13.90 on Yes Style, and the cost per ounce is only $8.22 per ounce. Really good one if you want something affordable. And this is actually a hybrid sunscreen, so it does have titanium dioxide, that's the mineral filter that it has, but then it has a bunch of chemical filters as well. I'm not going to try to pronounce these because they have really long names, but I, they'll be listed on the screen if you're curious. This one has a somewhat glowy finish, not quite as shiny as like the Aromatica or the Wamisa, but um, it's a nice hydrated glowy finish. The only thing about this that I don't like is that I've noticed sometimes it does pill. Now. With all of these sunscreens, I tested them over moisturizer, and the moisturizer I used is the Coco Kind Resurrection Polypeptide Cream. It's possible that this just doesn't interact well with that moisturizer. I would say this might work best if you just forego moisturizer and just use this as your moisturizer too. Just maybe try to limit the number of products that you're layering this with. But other than that, I do really like this one. As far as white cast, because it does have one mineral filter in it, I noticed just the slightest white cast around the hairline, but hardly even noticeable. On the rest of my face, I don't notice a white cast at all. And I just, I like the way this looks on my skin. It's very hydrating and lightweight. Even though it is hydrating and a little glowy, it doesn't feel thick and heavy on my skin. It does have a definite fragrance to it. To me, it just smells like a really clean scent. It doesn't bother me at all. It's not like an essential oil scent. I actually do prefer this over like that rosemary scent of the Benton. And I do notice the scent as I apply it, but I don't feel like it lingers on my skin after it's set in. Oh, and I also really like that it has a flip top cap here. It's actually the only one of this group that has that, and I just think it's kind of convenient. So I think this is a good option for anyone with normal to dry skin. Um, you just want to be careful about what products you layer it with. And if you are layering it over other products, make sure they have at least like 15 minutes to really sink into your skin before you go in with this. Um, but I love how affordable it is and I think it's a really solid option. So at number five, this is the Rovectin Skin Essentials Double Tone Up UV Protector. So this is actually a tinted mineral sunscreen. Now I'm really confused about this one because online I found two completely different ingredient lists for it. The one on Yes Style says that it only contains titanium dioxide. That's the only sunscreen filter that it listed. But then on the Rovectin website, it lists both zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. And this ingredient list also includes coconut oil, which normally coconut oil breaks me out. I haven't noticed this breaking me out. So I'm inclined to assume that the ingredients listed on Yes Style are the ones that are in here which would mean it doesn't have zinc oxide in it, which would kind of concern me because I was under the impression that titanium dioxide alone doesn't necessarily offer the best broad spectrum protection. But at the same time, this one also has the PA++++ rating, which is the highest UVA rating it could have. So I don't really know what to think about that. Um, yeah, I'm kind of confused if anyone knows the answer feel free to chime in, but I'm going to go ahead and assume that this is a good broad spectrum sunscreen option, but it does worry me a little bit. Like I probably wouldn't wear this if I'm going to be outside in the sun all day long, but I'll just wear it on more casual days and maybe wear it underneath makeup that also has sunscreen in it just to bump up the coverage a little bit. But anyway, I found that kind of odd, um, but 
I really, really like this formulation. This does have a tint. It has like a really light peachy tint to it. Uh, blends in to my skin tone really well. I don't get any cast with this. Now, if you do have a deeper skin tone, that's probably going to be too light of a tint for you, unfortunately. But this is one of my favorite tinted mineral sunscreens I've ever tried. It does give a matte finish, but again, it's not like a powdery, tight, dry feeling matte. Feels very comfortable on my skin. This also works really well under makeup. It holds on to makeup really well and just keeps it in place all day. Even though it is matte, I don't feel like my makeup looks dry as the day goes on. And it's just really pleasant to use. It blends in really quickly. One of the most elegant mineral sunscreen formulas I've ever tried. So I think a lot of people would really enjoy this one. This one doesn't have a great value. It's about the same as that other Rovectin one. This one retails for $31 and the cost per ounce is $18.24 per ounce. So not the best value. I'm also just a little bit concerned about the discrepancies between the ingredient lists that I've seen for this. But uh, if you are willing to try it, I think it's a really good matte sunscreen. My number four pick is the last mineral sunscreen, so that means this is my favorite mineral one of the whole group. And this is another one from Revectin. It's the Anti-Irritant UV Defense Tinted Sunscreen, so another tinted one. You can see the packaging is a lot different than the other one. This one definitely does contain both zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, but the PA rating is only three pluses instead of four. So this one has a very liquidy consistency, you can see. Definitely the most liquidy of any of these. And the tint on this one is a little bit less peachy than the previous Rovectin one. It's really just more of like a neutral beige. I really like how just lightweight this is and how quickly it sinks in. It feels very smooth and velvety on my skin. It is mattifying, but it doesn't dry out my skin whatsoever. Uh, it looks beautiful under makeup gives a really nice, just smooth, blurred base under makeup. And my makeup wore really well over this. It still looked amazing by the end of the day. So um, I think even if you have dry skin, you might still like this one too, but definitely a great pick, especially if you have oily skin. And because it's so liquidy, I feel like I can really like pile on a few layers or I could even reapply this throughout the day and I wouldn't have to worry about it looking too heavy because it just really just sinks right in. It doesn't feel thick at all. So that is my top mineral sunscreen of the group today. I Honestly, I would say both of these Rovectin ones, both of the tinted ones, are pretty much tied for me, but I would say I like this one just a little bit better. So now we've made it to the top three, and it's no surprise that all three of these are chemical sunscreens. Generally, chemical sunscreens are just a lot better, <laughs> a lot more elegant on the skin than mineral sunscreens. And I'm really excited because for the longest time, I didn't use chemical sunscreens at all. Ever since I started using tretinoin on my skin, American chemical sunscreens just irritate my skin really badly. And I'd been nervous to try any Korean chemical sunscreens, even though I know they use different chemical filters, I was still worried that they would irritate my skin. But luckily these three do not. I think these are still really good options, even if you have sensitive skin. So. My number three pick is from Purito, and this is their daily go-to sunscreen. This one has a really good value. It retails for $19.20, but it comes with actually more product than most sunscreens do, 60 milliliters, whereas the standard is usually 50 milliliters um, or 2.02 .02 fluid ounces. So the cost per ounce of this one is only $9.50, which is one of the lower ones of today's group. Um, so of course, because it's a chemical sunscreen, there's no white cast to this one. And the great thing about all of these chemical sunscreens is they don't feel like sunscreen at all. So if you or anyone in your life hates the feel of sunscreens, just try one of these because they feel nothing like a sunscreen. They literally just feel like a moisturizer. This one I just have ranked a little bit lower than the other two because it is very shiny. So I think you would only like this if you like a very glowy look. If you have very dry skin, I think this would be a great option. Sometimes it's just a little bit glowier than I prefer. Um, and I do feel like my makeup can slide around on top of this a little bit. So for that reason, it's not my top, top favorite, but I still think it's a very, very elegant, very just comfortable, easy to wear sunscreen. Number two is a sunscreen that ha I think has been going viral recently. I, I'm not really on TikTok, but I have heard that this one's been really blowing up lately for good reason. This is the Beauty of Joseon Relief Sun sunscreen. 
This is such a nice, such a nice formula. It reminds me a lot of the old version of the Crave Beauty Beat Shield. I haven't tried the new version of that, but the old version I used to love. The texture of this is very similar. It is like a lightweight cream sort of texture, but as you rub it in, it almost feels like a gel, like it, it, the way that it sinks into the skin. It's very lightweight. I think this would be a great option for all skin types, but if you want something more emollient and hydrating, you might not love this one because it does almost have like a gel sort of texture as it sinks in. So it's not going to give you like a ton of hydration necessarily. The finish of it is slightly glowy, but it doesn't necessarily feel super hydrating on the skin. I think I'm going to be really enjoying this one in the summertime because it's just so lightweight, uh, so easy to throw on, very easy to reapply as well. Um, it doesn't make my makeup get shiny throughout the day either. So I can definitely understand the hype on this one. I also really like their packaging. Like it's just very minimal. Oh, I also forgot to say, but the great thing about these, uh, these three chemical sunscreens that I'm sharing is that none of them sting or burn around my eyes. American chemical sunscreens, if you get them anywhere near your eye area, your eyes are going to be watering and stinging. But on me, I can, you know, put these on my eyelids, my under eyes, and I don't get any eye irritation. So really love that about these two. And this also has a pretty good value. Retails for $18. The cost per ounce is $10.65. So we've made it to my number one pick and I am so excited about this one. I've been talking about it a lot recently, so you could probably guess if you've been watching a lot of my recent videos, but this is the iUnique, I think that's how you say it, or Unique, maybe, uh, Centella Calming Daily Sunscreen. This one is so nice. It's a little bit more hydrating than the Beauty of Josen one, and it also has a little bit of a better value. This one comes with more product. So um, it retails for $17.15 on Yes Style, but it comes with two ounces or 60 milliliters. So the cost per ounce on this one is $8.49, which is only a little bit higher than the best value in this video, which was the Cause RX. Really, they're about the same. This one was $8.24, $8.49. This one I think is an especially good option if you have sensitive skin because it has um, Centella Asiatica in it, which is a really soothing ingredient. And that's actually the first ingredient in this sunscreen. And this, I mean, none of these sunscreens irritate my skin, but this one especially, not only does it not irritate my skin, but it almost just, it feels really soothing and refreshing to my skin. I mean, none of these sunscreens have irritated my skin that I've noticed, but this one especially feels really soothing on my skin. It just, like, I just, my skin just really drinks it up and loves the sunscreen. It's moisturizing, but it's not overly dewy or shiny. And what I really like about this one is that I've actually been able to use this without any moisturizer underneath. I've just used this as my, both my moisturizer and my sunscreen, and it works well. It's hydrating enough to use that way. It looks amazing under makeup. I, I just, like, my makeup continues to look fresh all day long doesn't get greasy throughout the day. And honestly, I would recommend this to anyone with any skin type, any skin tone. Even if you have super sensitive skin, I think this is worth a try. Even if you're nervous to try chemical sunscreens, maybe you've tried some um, like American chemical sunscreens in the past that irritated your skin, don't completely write off K-Beauty chemical sunscreens because I'm really pleasantly surprised that none of these irritated my skin. Of course, doesn't irritate my eyes either. So yeah, this is my absolute favorite of the whole lineup today. I feel like this is probably going to be a favorite of mine for a long time. I hope they never discontinue this. Um, and this is the best one. It retails for $17.15 on Yes Style, but I see it on sale on there a lot. Like you can usually find this on sale for like $12, which is amazing. So cannot recommend this one highly enough. I'm very happy to have tried it. Those other two chemical sunscreens are also really good, but this one is just even better for me. So those are all 12 of the Korean sunscreens that I've been testing recently. I really now would like to try more chemical Korean sunscreens because I only got three just because I wasn't sure how well my skin would tolerate them. But now that I know my skin can tolerate them, I'm really interested to try some more. So if you have any more recommendations for me, let me know. I would love to do like a part two to this video in the future. But again, if you do decide to purchase any of these, feel free to use my affiliate code if you want to get a little bit of a discount. Um, again, it's just Sarah Rose. Thank you all so much for watching. These are always my favorite videos to do every year. I do them once a year and I'll link my playlist of all the past sunscreen roundups that I've done on my channel. I think this is my fifth annual sunscreen roundup, which is wild. So I've tried a ton of sunscreens over the years, but honestly, I would say that these top three are the best of all the sunscreens I've ever tried over the years. Um, and I don't really see a reason to ever go back to Western sunscreens because these are just 
next level. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you found some good recommendations in this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I do also have a Patreon and a channel membership if you would like to support my channel further. Otherwise, I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day, and I will talk to you again very soon in my next video. Bye! Thank you.